everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber ask a question, which I will flip in here for you guys. And basically, he's asking, you know, even though I talk about progressive overload, can he get away with just getting a pump on his curls with his biceps, you know, in his biceps without counting reps or doing any of that? And there's some other conversation below that about progressive overload. Uh, so let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about this. Because... Um, People are going to be surprised at what my answer is going to be here. All right, is the pump itself indicative of growth? Will it automatically stimulate growth? No, nope, absolutely not. Is progressive overload required for muscle growth? Uh, yes, it absolutely is. Absolutely is a requirement unless drugs are in the mix. When drugs are not in the mix, it may not always be a requirement. Now, does that mean that this person can do what he's talking about doing and still grow his biceps? Uh, yes, for several reasons. Um, the latter is the most important reason, but the first one that we're going to get into is the fact that if he's just getting a really good pump and doing a lot of reps uh, with a given weight, he's probably going to get stronger on his biceps anyways. Is he going to be guaranteed to? No. Is he probably going to? Yes. So does that mean he will probably stimulate some muscle growth? Yeah, of course. Can getting, doing really high reps with a pump and a lightweight grow a smaller muscle like the biceps? Yes, absolutely. It can absolutely help with bicep growth. Um, and again, you've got to remember, if he gets better over time, one day he's able to do 11, another day he does 12, he gets up to 17 reps or whatever, 20, he's not counting. He's still getting progressive overload. Even if he's not counting, as long as the reps are going up, eventually he's going to add weight. Uh, and if he adds weight, he's still going to make progress. He's going to have progressive overload. They're going to grow. Now, another factor to consider there... Are bicep curls really where you get most of your bicep growth from? Uh, most of you guys know the answer if you've seen the data or look at studies and stuff out there. No, they're not. Your, your curls and your isolation movements for your arms are actually only a small portion of your muscle growth. They're secondary exercises. Uh, and again, you want to look at the different data we've got available. I've, as of yet, to ever see a study anywhere that really suggests that a curl is automatically, if that's the only thing you do, the best way to even grow your biceps. Uh, meaning, remember all the uh, studies we talked about before, I've linked them in the past. Uh, you guys can find this sort of stuff easily yourself, multiple studies out there. When studies are done, for noob lifters, uh, the lat pull down actually gives them more bicep development than a curl does. And for a lot of people, that's going to seem counterintuitive because you're like, what? The hand's in a pronated position. It can't be working the bicep as much, but it does. Because the bicep is still a primary mover on the lat pull down. It's part of a big compound movement. There is more overall workload involved. There is more tension on it due to the heavier weight workload. Even though there's other muscles involved, uh, it's still having to go through the biceps. And they're still taking a lot of that eccentric loading on top of it. So your compound movements in that case... When we study it in noobs, noobs who do lat pull downs get bigger biceps or more bicep growth than those who just do curls. When you add curls to lat pull downs, it doesn't give them a significant amount of additional growth to the lat pull down. In novice lifters, we've also seen studies where novice lifters, their biceps actually grow even from doing deadlifts, where there's no actual contraction, they're just being held as a stabilizer. A stabilizer that has taken a tremendous amount of weight that if you were to bend at the wrong angle could actually tear the bicep. So, what does that tell you? That the direct isolation isn't necessarily the fastest way to grow the bicep, or is it even guaranteed to be the best way? So that being said, look at the other studies out there. Uh, Brett Contreras has done all these EMG studies showing to his surprise that certain types of chin-ups, and remember, EMG studies are not the be-all, end-all. They are not perfect. They are a flawed method, but it does show you that, at least according to his data, a lot of the pull-down movements, or particularly weighted chin-ups, weighted pull-ups, caused more EMG activity in the biceps. That doesn't guarantee more growth, okay? But more EMG activity in the biceps than any of the curls did. So again, big heavy compounds are your number one stimulator for even the biceps. The curls are there as a secondary exercise to add additional workload, to hopefully give additional metabolic fatigue, to stimulate muscle fibers that maybe you miss with the big compounds. Uh, you need to really look at it that way because that is what the data suggests. The curls are not the primary mechanism of muscle growth. 
there to icing on the cake for someone who might be struggling with bicep development. And for some people who aren't struggling with bicep development, the curls might not even be doing much for them, to be honest. Uh, but they are icing on the cake, and that's the way to think of them. Kind of the finishing touch, so to speak. So, uh, another way to look at it. If the big compounds you're doing are your primary growth stimulators, and you're just doing the curls, which is really where they fit into it, to get extra fatigue in the bicep, to try to just recruit a few more muscle fibers, maybe something you missed. Just to fatigue them a little more to try to get a little more growth. That's all you're doing. Well... If you're progressing on your big compounds, but you're not progressing on your curls, are you still getting progressive overload? Meaning, let's say you've been curling 25 pound dumbbells to failure, however many reps that is. That doesn't increase. You're not counting them, but let's say you've been doing 22 reps and you don't get any higher than 22 reps. But you've been doing weighted chin-ups and you've got, you're getting stronger on your weighted chin-ups. You've gone from using a five pound plate or chain to going all the way up to 50 pounds for five or six reps or even all the way up to 60 pounds 70 pounds whatever it happens to be but your curls have an increase but you do your curls afterwards your biceps have already worked harder than they have been previously due to the heavy compound the chin up or the barbell row or whatever big compound you're subjecting them to if those are increasing you are having progressive overload in the bicep and what you're doing you're taking that progressive overload that primary stimulator from that big movement and you're just finishing it off with a little fluff movement to get a little more fatigue are you still adding more fatigue to the progressive overload even if you don't increase on the curls yes of course you are of course you are so would the curls uh, be limiting your growth in any way no you're still going to grow because that is the role of that. And people need to remember that. When we're talking about some of these isolation movements, you've got to remember isolation movements are never going to be your primary growth mechanism. They're never going to be the fastest way to gain muscle. They're there as a finishing touch. They're there to maybe strengthen a weak point a little bit. Put a little more fatigue on a muscle that you think needs more than what it's getting. If you're progressing on the big exercises, you don't need to care that much about your progression on a secondary exercise like that because it's just there to add extra fatigue at the end of the day. So it's not going to hurt your growth in any meaningful way if you're not progressing on it. It's not a big deal. Carry on. Um, and that's a good way to look at it. Sure, we could measure progressive overload. We could ensure that you're getting growth from the curls by counting the reps, counting the weight, counting the progression. But it's just there as a finishing touch. You don't necessarily have to do that if you are so inclined not to because you just care about getting that pump until it cramps and you're tired and don't want to count. Okay, fine. Not the end of the world. As long as you know you're progressing on the big exercises, it doesn't matter on that secondary exercise because as long as something is progressing, that muscle is growing. No way around it. You know, when you really think about it, it's impossible for it not to grow because you've already got progressive overload in there. You've already progressed. You've already got your overload. Um, because when you think, again, of total tension, total work, total tonnage being done, as long as your big exercise is going up, um, it doesn't matter if the small exercise isn't. In fact, you might find in some cases uh, where when you get stronger on your weighted chin-up, you're more fatigued after doing so. And if you're more fatigued after doing so, you might not even be able to curl as much weight as you had been. So let's say you're 25 pound dumbbells, you used to be able to do 20. But you, uh, sorry guys, my phone messed me up there. You used to be able to do 20, but then you got stronger on the way to chin up. You're more fatigued after the chin up. What happens? Now you can only do 15 or 16 reps with that 25 pound dumbbell. Does that mean you got less overload? No, of course not. Of course not. Your progressive overload was already achieved with the weighted chin up. It's already achieved. It doesn't matter. Uh, you got there. So even if you're weaker on the fluff exercise, the isolation at the end, you're still exhausting the muscle. If all you can do is 15 reps now because you're so fatigued from the weighted chin-ups that you can't do any more on the curls that you've lost strength on it, your biceps have still done more work. They're still just as fatigued. 
they're still going to grow. Uh, so it's not really a big deal. It really isn't that big of a deal that you ensure that you progress on the secondary exercises. But if you can progress on them, great, fantastic, wonderful. You know you're winning then, but it isn't necessary. Just got to remember where these things stand in there. These are fluff exercises that are there to finish a muscle off. The big movements are where you get your real size from. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and uh, I will talk to you guys next time.